Hello everyone and thanks for joining this time and uh, today is Friday 13 of November well if you if you if you like then uh, uh, well you, you don't have to do anything this day because it's Friday 13 but uh, anyway there were a lot of things happening during this week in Terraform world so I'd like to share them with you uh, so I received some feedback actually from the past uh, episode uh, that uh, sound was not so good or my mouse clicking was too loud so if it is still the case please let me know in the comments and I will try to change something for the next time or maybe I can do something even this time too because uh, I really want to make it uh, useful and easy to comprehend so the subject for this episode is uh, Actually, Terraform AWS modules, and I want to do some live coding and fix some issues here and there. But before that, I need to uh, go through different interesting things like news, events, and so on. So let's get started. This is it. Yes. Cool. So uh, the sponsor of this episode is uh, uh, M0. Uh, you probably already know what this company does. And quite recently, well, actually yesterday, they passed uh, SOC 2 type 2 compliant. Uh, in essence, it means that they are really uh, taking care of data which you store there. And uh, if you want to deploy your infrastructure using Terraform, uh, well, your data will be secure if you use them. And they also do a few other things related to cost uh, estimations and uh, you have pretty good control over your infrastructure. So if you want to learn more, go to n0.com slash Anton and uh, here you go. You can register and uh, uh, yeah, deploy your stack and see how it goes. Cool. So thanks for them to support my uh, journey on this. The next thing which I want to mention is, uh, well, this week, or actually yesterday, I gave talk about uh, uh, how to build, scale, and maintain 30 public Terraform modules with over 30 million provisions. Uh, I talked at uh, all the DevOps conference, and uh, now I can see that if you go to this URL, I will of course put it into description to this video, uh, you can actually see this uh, talk over 30. completely. Uh, without any registration and it's actually pretty well timed already uh, so you don't have to go through all uh, talks and try to find it uh, I'm quite sure that there will be some information for people who are already listening uh, to my streams uh, because you guys want to know how uh, like wh what exactly does it mean to scale and to maintain uh, this amount of projects and how to actually do this I also talk a lot about different uh, uh, strange things which I have done, uh, so uh, take it with uh, kind of um, <laughs> with some understanding and uh, hopefully you will uh, learn something from that. So another thing which is uh, relevant is this, um, well it is going to be lightning talks, I already mentioned it a few times, but this time uh, there is already a fixed agenda. So the agenda is quite cool. We are going to have talks about DevSecOps and then some EKS and then and then I will talk about doing serverless for uh, serverless with Terraform and then there will be Tung uh, who who attended uh, this show I think 2 or 3 weeks ago and he will uh, talk about TerraSpace again and then Andrei Divatkin will talk about uh, open policy agent uh, again for Terraform. So as you can see, uh, there will be at least these three talks plus probably this one uh, heavily uh, covering Terraform. So join us, it's uh, free to register and here is link and uh, it should be fine. Uh, well, uh, other things related to events, because as you can see, we are sitting at home and there are just events, events uh, all the time. Well, 18th of November, there will be Hashi Talks 2021. Uh, just uh, go to this website and uh, register or submit call for papers and uh, I'm sure that uh, you will learn a lot if you join uh, as, as attendee. It's quite a cool event to my mind too. 
well and uh, other things related to the channel itself is is that well i just closed the wrong window hopefully i can restore it back <laughs> well yeah it's quite funny because i closed the window which contains all of my notes so if i don't have this window open immediately i will have to improvise well here is it good now i have all my notes back so i can follow some sort of agenda for today so what i want to say is that uh, there will be a few few things happening on this channel as well so uh, on this channel uh, i have asked a uh, few people uh, what do they want to have and actually a few people already said that hey we want to learn from um, uh, from uh, EKS module maintainers, uh, what exactly do they do, how do they do this, what are the future, and so on. So I'm really excited to announce that next week uh, Tierno, uh, who is uh, currently the main maintainer of uh, Terraform AWS uh, EKS module, is going to join us and he will be uh, able to answer all questions which you guys have. So this this is his nickname and uh, if you use this EKS module you know that he has done significant amount of contributions to this module so if you use this module uh, please uh, come up with some questions and uh, we'll have interesting discussion next week after that i'm discussing a few opportunities and few options with other people uh, related to development of uh, Terraform AWS provider. So I want to bring some people who are doing actually Terraform, actually development of this provider, uh, HashiCorp Terraform providers AWS. Uh, there are a lot of people uh, who are already contributing something, but uh, uh, the thing is that uh, I cannot just uh, pick uh, random guys from this list and say, hey guys, please join. And the thing is that uh, they are employees of HashiCorp and uh, they cannot talk about this stuff openly. So that's, that's the reality. So it means that I cannot just uh, ask uh, anyone from this list, uh, like from HashiCorp employees, but uh, I'm sure that we'll find somebody who's, uh, who's very, very good in doing this. So yeah, if you have any ideas, uh, who would you like to have um, next time or maybe in the near future please let me know okay uh last thing which is actually related to this is this announcement so today well not today yesterday aws announced a new portion of aws heroes and there are a few people uh, i am particularly interested in join us so sebastian korfman uh, is the guy who is staying behind uh, Terraform, well, Terraform uh, CDK for Terraform. So he is the main developer, and uh, I think uh, he has developed a few other projects before that related to Terraform. So uh, I'm currently talking to him, and I really want to have an uh, interview with him. So... If you have any other uh, options, please uh, reach out to me. Well, what else has happened? Actually, quite cool things is going to happen, right? In two weeks, we have, oh, in well, almost in two weeks, we'll have uh, AWS reInvent. And uh, this time, it's going to be uh, online and it's going to be free for everyone. So how to not uh, become crazier and how to not... Uh, kind of uh, lose control of what is going to, to be announced. Cloudpackboard.com has uh, created, uh, updated, uh, like they have created it, uh, I think, last year also, but uh, now they have made it uh, pretty uh, up to date with all available events which are going to, to happen at three event. So you need to just go and go there, register account, select uh, different uh, services or different types of uh, uh, things you, you are curious about and then uh, they will send an update to you uh, when these talks are going to happen and there are a lot of different talks a lot of different 
uh, details about these talks. So it's quite uh, important that you go there and you find what is interesting for you, put it into your wish list, and then you can uh, watch it uh, and it will notify you as well. Also, they sent pretty nice weekly email about uh, what's going uh, what's going on in AWS world. Uh, so yeah, highly recommend to have this kind of service, uh, to use this kind of service. Well, HashiCorp also did a few things related to to sharing and uh, uh, showing to people how to use uh, how to use uh, Git ops with Terraform. I will send this link uh, also in the description. I just want to highlight that uh, uh, it happened seven days ago and uh, HashiCorp Live on Twitch, uh, they, have, they have created a stream uh, where they talked about uh, how to go through, uh, well, the subject was somewhere here. Uh, well, not, yeah, it is. GitOps for Enterprise Azure Infrastructure Automation, but in essence, it's uh, GitOps Terraform TerraGrant. So if you are into this subject, uh, I think you will find something useful there. Uh, well, uh, what they talked uh, about was maybe a little bit too generic for some people, but uh, nevertheless, it's quite cool to see how other people are doing this GitOps type of work uh, with Terraform. So last week we had a pretty cool episode with a few participants uh, from Terraform AWS modules maintainers. And uh, we had uh, our first uh, office hour uh, episode where we talked about different uh, things related to, uh, like related to overall uh, future of Terraform AWS modules, uh, what we can do, what we should do and so on. So the interesting uh, kind of conclusion, I would say, or well, not conclusion, just notes, I put into uh, this repository uh, called Meta, and then there is file called Notes, and uh, I put some notes uh, about what we were discussing and what we're going to do. Some of these things uh, are quite uh, straightforward, and some of these things are rather important related to, for example, which version of Terraform are we going to support? Uh, in essence, no support for 0.11 completely, and uh, we will start use features of 0.13 uh, starting uh, like after six months of uh, grace period. So grace period is like when uh, general availability uh, was and then six months after that, we can use new cool features for 0.13. I will go through some of these features later today during, uh, during the live coding session. Uh, but uh, uh, overall, uh, if you're using 0.11, 0.12, uh, well, we will stop uh, taking care of it from 1st of January, which is in one and a half months. Okay, so, and now let's talk about what's new in the Terraform itself, right? There are a few things which I want to <clears throat> to highlight. Specifically, well, this is not needed. Uh, this is it. Yeah. So I compare uh, from last release to release candidate one, which was released a couple days ago. So a few things uh, there are quite interesting. Well, it's in change log. Mm. Uh, um, well, where is it? Yes, I think it is this one. Well, this one is really, really cool. If you've been using Terraform and you try to use latest version and then you see, <laughs> and then you see that, sorry, this version is, oh my God, I click increase font and it's still increasing font. <laughs> okay, here is it. So I want to read just this one. Uh, so Terraform will now support reading and writing all compatible state files, even for the future, uh, from the future version of Terraform. So you probably imagine the situation when you update, uh, let's say, to 0.13.5, but your CI is still using 0.13.4, and your CI failing because it says that state file was updated using newest version. Uh, this is not going to be an issue from 0.14.0, 0, 
So I'm really glad to see this because in many cases I've been using very different versions uh, like 0 to 12.22 and then dot 24 and then I have some conflicts between that so now I don't have to worry about this but again it's only gonna to affect uh, 0 14 so we will see this in action uh, not so soon um, okay so well that's that's pretty much it as you can see I spent just 17 minutes uh, going through all uh, general things hopefully you find it useful and uh, yeah hello Maxim so uh, let's move on to something something useful well not useful but at least interesting so let me close some things here and there because they are not so relevant anymore so what I'm gonna to uh, to do today well I have few things related to uh, related to different pull requests so this time I actually prepared list of pull requests because I want to save time and don't want to go through uh, through, through different um, uh, kind of repositories and find what we can do and so on so here is the thing which uh, I didn't fix last time so during last last uh, I wanted to say sprint, but no, it was not sprint. It was just episode. I was working on uh, fixing uh, S3 bucket module where notifications uh, should no notification where SNS and SQS policies should be optional. So here is the thing that uh, this uh, so there was an error, uh, which means that left part and right part are not of the same type so what I used to do is that I used to just wrap this value with to map to make sure that this curly bracket well I don't know if you can see it well so let me know if if I should increase font or something so the problem here sorry where is it the problem here is that uh, uh, well where is it yes here is it to map was missing and that's why left part and right part were treated as different type i think it said something like object uh, does not match object so that's why i made it uh, to convert to map so to map is one of uh, these useful feature which is available in 012 and uh, yeah we have to use it for such situation uh, so that's pretty much it well, the next uh, thing is related to VPC module and the future of VPC module, the way I, I want to think about it. So, as you probably are um, aware about uh, VPC module, uh, you can pass list of uh, seed ranges and then it will create uh, resources for you. So you, you have to pass list of IP addresses or seed ranges for subnets as well as list of uh, list of uh, availability zones like this uh, well it's pretty much what you can do but uh, then there is a proposal uh, and again now we are using 0, uh, 0 013 and we can use uh, new features so the proposal is to use uh, to convert from this type where we had before to be able to create maps so this, the benefit of this one is that we can easily remove uh, anything from the middle and then no other uh, subnets will be affected. So this is one benefit. And another benefit is that uh, we can give different tags, different names to these specific subnets. So the thing which I was, like th this pull request here, uh, 535, is implementing something like that and uh, uh, what I what I like in this pull request is that well they are thinking about using maps where keys are something and uh, this is a map of uh, some other properties that's pretty nice if you've been using VPC and you think that uh, that's great sure that great addition and we're just gonna to uh, we, we are gonna to just use this uh, 
uh, like proposed, that's fine. But significant amount of benefit in Terraform is uh, that hard and complicated things can be implemented inside of a module, which means that you as a user don't really care what we uh, are doing inside of it, right? And uh, this change which is uh, proposed here is going to be very destructive because you change uh, type from list to maps and uh, if this is a break and change that's that's definitely uh, we have to try to avoid so what i was proposing i mean i was describing it uh, in some details and then i thought like okay i need to write some code to actually show what i mean so now let me show some code and uh, explain it uh, from the code point of view uh, what is it? Cool. I guess you can see my screen. Yes, you can see it. Cool. So imagine this uh, project. So this is what we have right now. Okay, we have... Uh, this is just a sample file where I do some experiments and that's what I want to show here. So what we have right now, we have variable uh, called subnets and we have... Uh, we treat it as a list. So this is what we have right now. And uh, the new proposal and new thing which I've heard actually from a few customers of mine is that uh, they want to have much more control over each of these subnet. For example, they want to give uh, maybe, uh, uh, maybe even like this. So they want to think about which availability zone, which name they want to give, which seed range they want to give also, they want to take care of individual tagging for different um, subnets and so on. There are a lot of other things which can be useful. So think about this as uh, um, what else? It can be like maybe you don't need uh, IPv6 in this one, for example. So you can say IPv6 equal false, something like that. So again, it gives you a large amount of control what you can do if you if you specify it like this so uh, what i was uh, proposing overall is that when we have this code uh, as a list so we have to define one list of seed ranges another list of availability zones this is what we have right now and if we go to user and say like hey okay now you just change from list to map it will uh, be pretty destructive change what if we just uh, implement this logic uh, inside of Terraform module and we can do it like this. So if I go to Terraform console and now it's, what is it? String required. Well, of course it doesn't like what I wrote here. I think it doesn't like this string. Now let's try again. So that, that's uh, like currently work in progress and I don't really care about uh, small things like this one. So what I want to show here is that uh, I have list and I have maps. And uh, I want Terraform module to convert it transparently for the user to something what it knows about. Well, as I can see, maps are much more powerful, so let's use maps. So if I now uh, write local dot one map, I will see that uh, this line 11 is executed. So what I'm using here, I'm using try to try to convert this variable, uh, which is already a map, as I can see from default, into map. So it's successful and then uh, it's going to use this variable. Cool. Uh, so this is going to be used. But if this is going to produce any error, then it's trying to do this one. So what this does is that this is creating map where keys are like uh, uh, keys are these values, literally. So if I now rerun this example, if I just uncomment it as a list and run console again, and now if I local one map, I can see that I pass this as a list, but uh, then this try uh, was, so this was failing. I mean, literally this is an error because if I run it here, 
I will see that, oh my god, that's an error. So that's why try goes to the next function, and it tries to do this one. And this one, as we can see, is actually successful, and this is exactly the same output as this one. So by using this function try, uh, we are able to make user not uh, think about what kind of code he has now, and we transparently convert it for him. Alternatively, what we could do, and that's, well, maybe that's also an option for some cases, but I don't think it's uh, necessary here, subnet as maps, for example. And uh, this is where user have to specify this value as a map uh, if he wants, uh, or use old value, which is least, uh, because it was before. But this is not necessary because uh, we can just specify that we don't care about type, we can specify type any. Uh, in fact, we understand that it's not any, it's list of any and uh, map of any. So we just specify type any in this case. And then user specify list or map and we convert it transparently. So overall, the, the point of this one is that uh, by using this solution, we can easily uh, hide the complexity and do, um, uh, do conversion internally and uh, uh, come up with not just empty curly bracket, but we can actually come up with a little bit more sophisticated structure uh, so that we can maybe figure out which availability zone user wants, because uh, in this case, we already know that user specified or provided some list of availability zones here. So we can come up with something more complete here, as well as tagging. So uh, overall, I think it's a pretty good uh, idea to use try. Uh, we can use this feature already inside of uh, Terraform AWS modules, because this is a feature of 0 0.13. Um, so I, I will recommend uh, to these guys to use this feature and I can show it here. So uh, anyway, the work which will have to be done is still related to the update of this resource. So this is a real code from the VPC module. And if I just simplify it a little bit, uh, I can, well, I can simplify it a little bit by just saying that here we are uh, taking length of the list. Um, well, we don't need many of this right now for this example. Uh, because overall, this count will be replaced with for each, and for each will take into account uh, local dot one map, something like that. Maybe it will add also this one here. So uh, the thing is that uh, there will be refactoring required and uh, refactoring will be required on the customer side as well. So what it means is that customer previously had resources with uh, indexes. So it was zero and for example, now it will became, become uh, uh, like subnet one or something like that. So there will be a case when we can use uh, Terraform state MV uh, or we can use something like uh, TF migrate tool, which I have not tried yet still, but it, I think it is, uh, it's gonna to be helpful uh, at some point. Currently Terraform does not provide us with anything more sophisticated than this one. So yeah, that's uh, the thing. We'll see how it goes. And I think uh, at some point it will be implemented. This module will be quite nice. So there are a few questions uh, Denise is asking. Hello, hello Denise. Uh, what resources would you recommend for learning advanced Terraform? Uh, well, I think a pretty good uh, uh, experience you will get uh, if you look into uh, some open source projects uh, like uh, like modules which we have or uh, guys from Cloud Posse, they have a lot of interesting things. So I'm quite sure that you will find uh, uh, you'll find something useful. I can send. Well, uh, let, just one second. I will mm, cloud posse. 
So mm, where is it? Oh yeah, right. I, for I forgot to share the right window, so apologize. Yeah. So Cloud Pulsar has a lot of modules, and yeah, some of the modules are pretty complicated, and some of them are not so complicated. Uh, I think the cool part here is that you don't have to learn all of this, uh, like how to, like how to write these complicated things. Actually, uh, quite opposite. I would recommend you to focus on how to get your job done with less magic, which you write yourself. Literally, how to go to registry, how to find one module, how to figure out which arguments you need to pass into it, and so on. And don't be uh, kind of excited with all these cool features which Terraform documentation pushed to you, like workspaces, overrides, and so on. It's just uh, not necessary. Um, well, so yeah, and uh, <laughs> hello. <laughs> Good to see you. Okay, um, right. So the next uh, thing which I have in my list is actually uh, this thing. So uh, adding LDAP into rules TF. Um, well, the thing is that there is LDAP and there is LDAP S, and uh, this pull request is adding LDAP. Well, it's quite easy, a pull request, uh, but there are so many changes happen in this pull request. I don't know why it, why all of these changes were necessary. Uh, so I will just show how I work with this. So I verify rules TF file where a uh, list of uh, ranges is specified. So in this case, it's one port from 389 to 389 TCP. And then there is group, uh, which is called auto group of the same name is created. Usually when people uh, push this pull request, I don't have to go and search about whether 389 is the right port for LDAP because, well, I, I really don't care if it's right or not uh, because I, I'm not expert in LDAP ports, uh, to be honest. So anyway, I'm going to just show, uh, show this in the code so it was pull request 195 so security group and let's see 195 so now I have this one so when I saw a lot of uh, a lot of readme changes it just makes me think that uh, there is old version of pre-commit hooks used. Well, it's actually ancient 31 and now it's 45. So what I'm gonna to do is that I'm gonna to just run, run minus A uh, to automatically format all of them. So it, it should be quite straightforward overall, though it may take a lot of time uh, because uh, well, that's how Terraform works. And uh, actually, I don't know. Uh, I don't know why it suddenly start uh, start taking so long time. Oh, yeah. Uh, can you advise good uh, ECS module? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, I actually was working on one this week. <laughs> well, it's not it's not very good, to be honest, but uh, ECS uh, usually consists of so many things that it's just hard to uh, figure out which one uh, which one uh, is good or bad and again I have not been using ECS uh, myself like for very very wide variety of combinations so I don't have any good one but the one which I found was uh, on registry and uh, I specifically was looking for Fargate so I will show uh, okay while, while it's doing something I can show it here in this code so there is ECS module, so Terraform it was ECS module, and what this module is doing is quite simple. It just creates an ECS cluster with all possible capacity providers because I, I needed to support uh, Fargate spot. And uh, then there is also sub module, 
uh, which creates ECS instance profile uh, for you. So that's pretty much it. Uh, there is not much what uh, this module is doing. Also, there is an example uh, which you can see how it's how it's uh, implementing it. So creating required resources like uh, VPC, um, ECS cluster, then EC2 provider, then this one is just for, just for this demo, then create ECS servers, and then launch an auto scaling group and place it into that ECS cluster. So that's pretty much it. Uh, there is not much what this module is doing. So if you need to have more uh, like more sophisticated things like maybe you want to put servers and connect them with application load balancers uh, you can go to registry or you can uh, actually compose your own things uh, using terraform aws modules already mm. i mean there is an uh, alb there is uh, ecs um, yeah go go ahead and combine it the way you need so here uh, there were some failures we can see git diff uh, well this is not not a problem well, yeah. so this is kind of predictable uh, that let's see if, if I scroll a little bit more Oh, I don't see anything bad. So let's just uh, push this to to this pull request and see see it in UI. It's much easier to see there. So I'm still getting comfortable with uh, view with uh, GitHub CLI because it's it's a little bit different from what I was using before. So here we are, now it says that just 10 files changed, that's pretty much correct. And if I look into this readme, well, I shouldn't look into this readme because it's just impossible to figure out what's the diff here. That's how Terraform docs work. Uh, nevertheless, if I look in this source code, I can see that uh, rules, that's correct one. Then uh, modules LDAP is creating the things which were defined and uh, the rest of this code is actually automatically generated so I don't have to verify it in any case though there is one thing which I can do at the same time is actually fixing these versions um, because I want to stay forward compatible as well so I want to go to this um, security group module and of course I need to switch here so I'm in this security group module and I need to go to to, to, to to templates folder here. There is version. So this folder is going to be used as a template for all of uh, for all of other modules. So what I mean by that is that now I change this code here and I also need to change it, of course, in, in this file in versions in the root module. Mm. and let's see if there is something else in examples no there is no file in examples so in order to take this into account right now i need to run magic script which i call update groups i have no clue if it's gonna to work because i haven't touched this script for probably two or three years <laughs> so what it's doing right now is just taking this uh templates files or i can actually look into source code of this script mm. you're welcome maxim so uh, what this script is doing well right so this script is actually so old that it was created for uh, terraform before 0 12 uh, when we didn't have issues with different types so that's why uh, this hack was introduced then. The point is that when I use, uh, so I'm, I'm reading information about, uh, yeah, I'm copying all of these files and then I'm reading information about uh, 
ingress and egress rules and so on uh, and yeah just set all of these values and do another code generation here and 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 where is this magic set well there is no magic set yeah here is it yeah okay so nevertheless uh, it it is taking some time mm. now when it finish i just have to run uh, terraform um, terraform uh, what is it pre-commute hook and it will automatically fix documentation because here documentation is just uh, this is just a stub cool so git add and run well this probably will take another ages so we, we can uh, skip this for now so it will uh, fix this documentation and I will commit so meanwhile uh, while it's doing something I want to go to the next issue actually because this is just uh, too simple and not so exciting I think so the next thing here is I'll show it here in the browser. I'll click it. I click it and it's still opening. <clears throat> so here is it. So this pull request was actually open quite a few days ago, just three days ago. And uh, the thing here was that this sub module, I am assuming, will roll with SAML. Uh, did not allow list of uh, list of uh, IAM principles, but uh, then uh, this guy has created uh, all required changes, and then he updated examples, and now everything looks fine. So, what exactly uh, is the thing here? Uh, this was string before. And now it's gonna to accept lists. If it says s, then it's plural, then it's list, or it's gonna to accept single string. So we are just compacting these two lists and uh, taking unique options and removing empty options with compact. So that's pretty much it. The code itself is pretty simple. Uh, the examples also work. I think I run it even before. <clears throat> So this one uh, is probably missing just one thing, which is documentation. Let me see. Well, no, it's actually uh, containing all documentation change, right? So this change is already generated. Uh, sometimes I see that people update these uh, things manually and then there is inconsistency between this uh, documentation section and the one which is specified here. So it makes perfect sense to just uh, check out this example or this uh, code, run pre-commit and push it. So let's go back to this, to this one first because it just finished. It says that it updated everything. So if I now git commit fixed readme, Well, it's again taken ages, but it should be much faster this time. Yeah, that's the thing that there are some few changes in Terraform quite recently, which makes uh, Terraform FMT uh, extremely slow. I don't know why. It's, I, I, need, I need to double check why what's going on, but uh, yeah, something is not right. <clears throat> So uh, while I'm waiting for this one, uh, I want to check pull request 110. Mm. Well, apparently it will take another age, ages. No, not so, not so much. Okay, so git push to this one. Mm. 
So if I now go to this one, refresh it, I should see a little bit more changes. That's primarily to versions TF file everywhere, which is good. And overall, all of these changes is just impossible to review in this module because they are automatically generated. So I go to this one and I just click squash merge, remove this. Well, and this is message. As you can see, I'm very unique. I'm sometimes saying thank you, sometimes I, I say thanks. Okay, so let's move on to the one about I am, which was again very simple to uh, to go through. So the number is hundred ten. PR check out 110. So the only thing which I think worth running here is uh, pre-commit just to make sure the documentation is okay. If it is okay, then uh, I can just merge it. So, and this stream I want to make much shorter so there will be just 12 minutes more um, because again i have received feedback from some of you guys who said that it's too long so thanks again for giving feedback and as i said uh, i may listen to your feedback <laughs> so keep keep uh, telling it to me okay so i think another reason why it is taking so long time now is because of streaming all my CPUs are now 100%. Maybe it's it's making it difficult for Terraform to, to do something. So, yeah, could not load plugin. So the, the error message which I see here is uh, quite, quite interesting. Uh, again, I, I need to double check what exactly the problem is, but if I scroll, if I scroll somewhere, no, I couldn't scroll it even. So let's get merge origin master. So let's, no, it's already up to date. Okay, so <laughs> Th thanks, Mohammed, uh, that you want to make it longer for half hour more. Uh, well, I, as soon as I'm out of uh, issues which I plan, then uh, I think there is no need to stretch it. But thanks for the feedback anyway. So what is the problem with uh, this uh, issue here? So it failed to... So validation failed on specific modules. And as you can see, it says could not load plugin. And uh, this is what I, I'm not entirely sure why it says so. Uh, because uh, I think this is how Terraform work in general, is that uh, if you run a lot of uh, parallel process or even not parallel, but process which uh, are not releasing logs of this, uh, of this, uh, where is it, of this, yeah, of this module, uh, then uh, Terraform says that uh, plugin requires a plugin re reinitialization required. And if I run this code again now, most likely it will pass successfully. So this problem uh, which I see here, it happens when I run uh, Terraform validate or Terraform uh, FMT uh, very often. It's like, I don't know, every second, or not second, but sequentially in the loop. Mm. I didn't bother to investigate more, honestly, because I, I just have some other things to do. But uh, in general, uh, I think it can be the problem. 
I've had the same behavior long time ago when I run it uh, when I run Terraform on uh, uh, Circle CI uh, in parallel threads or parallel processes. Uh, but uh, now I don't have it. Like I don't know what, why why the problem is. Well, it, it didn't solve the problem, so I will probably look into this uh, a little bit later. But I, now I can see that it's producing few other errors here and there. So yeah. Uh, I have another hack here, which is, so what I do here is that I'm going around inside of this module and I'm deleting all folders.terraform. Uh, uh, so this will trigger re-download of all uh, .terraform folders. So Terraform init will run every time. So now if I run it, most likely it will fail again, but then second run, it will be okay. Uh, again, that's a little bit strange uh, why I need to do this sometimes, but again, uh, I'm this kind of guy who is going to uh, to try things until uh, I'm full and then I, I will start fixing them. <laughs> so right now it doesn't bother me so much uh, because I, I can do things in different windows in uh, like parallel. But in general, uh, it is a little bit frustrating. So, what we have uh, next. So now it's doing some Terraform Validate. I will already open another issue just because there is possibility to open another issue. And see what happens. Yeah, another issue is actually quite big, I think. Well, at least I didn't read it, so it, maybe it's not so big, but just uh, share my screen now and I can I can read it for the first time. So uh, Terraform AWS Atlantis is one of these modules which I have created a long time ago and then I was using it and then I didn't use it and then I use it again. So it's like uh, up and down all the time. Overall, Atlantis is uh, heavily used by many, many people uh, using this module as well. Well, they use it on different phases. Some of them use it like completely. Some people take parts of it. So nevertheless, uh, this module existed for quite a long time, quite successfully. I use it still on one of my project uh, full time. So, um, so just one second. Uh, so uh, what it means allow extra container definition. And this is related to ECS, which Maxim asked. Uh, this is one of the best module out there, uh, which I'm not sure if we still need it, to be honest. I mean, we can do a lot of this in Terraform uh, natively now, but uh, this module uh, was necessary back then when we have to create correct uh, uh, what is it container definition for ECS tasks so here we specify all properties like this and then Atlantis is using uh, this JSON map object to like for its own needs so let's see uh, what this change is um, Mm -hmm. hmm. Right. So this expands the option by allowing users to add supplementary container definitions in addition to the existing replacement of all container definitions. Well, that's... Uh, um, let me think a little bit. Uh, okay. Uh, meanwhile, uh, this module has successfully finished. And as you can see, after a couple executions, uh, so after I removed all .terraform folders and then run pre-commit run, it managed to download everything and everything is uh, correct. 
So there is nothing what I should push, which is good. So git checkout master. Uh, let me just finish this one because it's this one is easy comparing to uh, to the one about Fargate. So squash and merge and feature. Okay. So Okay, so this one is done. Well, let's move on to the Fargate and to to Atlantis. So here is here is my screen. Hmm. Okay, so uh, let's see what Marco wants to do. Is that indeed now we have uh, Atlantis uh, ECS task definition and it's using the whole. Uh, so there is one mm, one task definition. Uh, per one service, so it's consuming all CPU which is given. So there is no way to add more um, more tasks, right? Yeah. So there is no difference between ECS container CPU and ECS task task CPU. Well, that's uh, that's true. I didn't even think about this. Like, why do you need this? So this allows me in particular to provide additional sidecars while still using the recommended container definition. Mm. Yeah, so absolutely. So there, there is a good case for that. Uh, I can see that. Mm. So what he is proposing is to add extra container definitions in addition to existing. Well, sounds, sounds good to me. Let's see how the solution is. So the solution actually here is that if custom container definition is empty, then we try to uh, to come up with Atlantis uh, container definition for Bitbucket and mm -hmm. so so here we are just concatenating to this is going to be one list right well I'm not sure I understand. Here is extra, here is custom. Why cannot uh, he use just custom container definition instead? A list of valid container definitions provided as a single valid JSON document. Well, let, let, let me uh, decrypt this again. So the container definition, which is used by Atlantis, is gonna to be uh, one of one of this list, right? So if I look into the code how it was before, custom container definition was used or was uh, available exactly for that reason. Is that user can specify whatever he wants there, right? So if I look into custom container definitions code here, a list of valid container definitions provided as a single valid JSON document. And here is it, a list of valid container definition provided as a single valid JSON document. Well, this will be supplemented. Hmm. Yeah, so here you can specify all and here you can just specify part of it. Right. Mm -hmm. 
Well, every time when I see something like this, and where I spent some time thinking about whether this is good use case, I'm wondering that I will have to maintain it at some point. Because uh, once uh, this code is there, and uh, I'm not using it daily, I will have to decrypt these uh, messages or this uh, configuration code somehow in my head later on and figure out uh, what author actually wants uh, to do with it. So currently this uh, is making my life hard. Like, I don't want to make hard life really. <laughs> um, Mm-hmm. Okay. So, does anyone have any opinion whether this is necessary or not? Whether we should have this functionality at all in the code or not? Let's see what other issues are. Uh, and I also want to see what exactly uh, inside of uh, current container definition. So here is Atlantis. So here is container definition, GitHub, GitLab. Okay. So we are just creating ECS container definition with this task and uh, I just uh, think is this something what can be easily externalized outside so that when user wants to uh, uh, instead of appending new task definition whether this user wants to uh, mm, customize it, he can just take it uh, completely and compose it himself. So for example, mm, what this code would look like is just, so I'm gonna to take some of this code somewhere outside into examples, GitHub complete, So here is Atlantis block and here we can specify a bunch of different things related to uh, to the container definition, to, sorry, to task definition. So if I specify here custom container definitions equal something and then I use, of course I will just simplify it to, to some degree. So here is my, uh, oh, okay, this is gonna to be called main container definition. Mm, so this is gonna to be used to run, uh, to run just Atlantis. So here I can specify Atlantis, Atlantis. I don't know if this is correct one, but anyway, let's try it. So this I know Ah, sorry, this is Atlantis image. Container name, well, probably Atlantis. So this value, I already know it's going to be this one, this one. Memory reservation. Mm. So as I can see, all of these values, I already know. Right, so I, I should be able to put whatever I whatever I want here. Right. So okay, I will just remove all of this for for this port mapping. Well, I can also get it. I don't know which port Atlantis use. Mm, let's say probably something like four one. 
equal one. Log definition. Mm. Well, I can come up with something here as well. So all of this is not necessary here. So the, pretty much this is the main uh, container definition which I need to have in order to run Atlantis. Okay, and now I want to make my own, which I called uh, sidecar, and I provide something else here sidecar slash sidecar well I don't need to know anything like that so anyway now I have two uh, two task definitions here port mapping is available so I can do some links between this containers I guess somehow using uh, using this JSON file mm, so container definitions is it going to be string right so st string is going to be well how to make string from uh, both of these side container definitions that's a tricky question I have no clue how to do this, but let's go into examples or into source code of this. Mm. So here we have. Ah, okay, this is how we make strings. I see. Cool. That's pretty handy. <laughs> so, so the uh, we we have to take uh, JSON map encoded. So when we need to make string, then we just go here and we specify module dot main container definition JSON map encoded and then comma and then another value which is going to be not main but sidecar. So that's it. So you can just specify custom container definitions as a list. And uh, well, I don't want to run this because it will just take ages, but uh, I simply don't see the problem here, which can be solved or should be solved differently. And again, the point is to make my life easier. <laughs> I don't want to, to decode all this crazy JSON encode uh, expressions which uh, were introduced in this pull request. That's absolutely not the fun part for me to do. So let me just show this example into the uh, into the issue which was created and see what uh, well so what I think is that uh, there is no need to have another variable just for this because well in english there is no comma before because but in russian there is so it sometimes confuse me because there is already variable you can use for this here is the example code. This, and here I can write uh, Terraform because GitHub can highlight it nicely. So <clears throat> let's verify. Mm. 
Mm, yeah, I think it's very good. Um, sure. Yeah, I think that's it. There is not much what I can add. Mm. So let's see. Okay, so that was it. Uh, this issue, I, I have not been able to merge, but I think uh, the solution is pretty good. Mm. So we'll see. Is there is anything else what you guys want to uh, uh, to go through? Please let me know. If not, then. Uh, we can uh, wrap up for today and the last thing which i want to mention is the sponsor of this stream was was and still <laughs> m0.com self-service cloud environments and you go there you spin up something you see how much it cost 138 dollars that's it and yeah thanks everyone for attending and thanks uh, for wishing Nice weekend, Maxim. Take care. Bye. Well, how to how to end this stream now? Mm. Ah, yeah, here is it. Bye.